Disturbing Teen Killers React to Life Sentences Today, we will unveil a gruesome tale involving family ties, bloodshed, and a daring theft. Gone are the stereotypical images of the disheveled old man lurking in the shadows or grim sociopaths who despise everything they see. Instead, we delve into the chilling realm of teenage killers whose faces bear no trace of remorse as they commit unspeakable acts of brutality. Witness the raw reactions of these young murderers as they receive lifetime prison sentences, challenging the very essence of humanity. Stay tuned to our channel, Just Scary, and brace yourself for an unforgettable encounter with the unimaginable. 1. The courtroom in River West, Milwaukee became a scene of utter chaos in 2009. As an unforgettable and horrifying incident unfolded, Shondell Jackson, a 19-year-old cold-hearted criminal, stood at the center of it all. Alongside an accomplice, Jackson targeted an unsuspecting young man named Nathan Potter as he made his way to his apartment. With a gun in hand, Jackson's motive was clear. He sought to rob Potter for his own selfish desires. However, upon discovering that Potter had no money to offer, Jackson callously discarded any semblance of humanity and ruthlessly ended Potter's life. As the court proceedings began, Jackson displayed an unsettling lack of remorse, sporting a smug expression and disregarding the profound grief of Potter's family. The sheer depravity and senselessness of his actions led Nathan Potter's father to confront a chilling truth, the existence of individuals who personify pure evil. Swift justice caught up with Jackson, and within a remarkably short time frame, he was apprehended and charged with first-degree homicide. Throughout the trial, Jackson's detachment persisted as if he took pleasure in the chaos he had unleashed. 2. Next is the chilling tale of Dexter Johnson a name that strikes fear into the hearts of those who dare to comprehend the depths of human depravity. In a world that has gradually steered away from extreme punishment, there are individuals who commit such heinous acts that justice seems to demand nothing less. One such individual is Dexter Johnson, whose monstrous deeds left an indelible mark on the town of Harris County, Texas. It was a fateful night in June 2006 when a seemingly innocent car ride turned into a horrifying nightmare. Dexter and his gang of partners seized control of the vehicle, transforming what should have been a romantic escapade for Maria Paris and Hoy Nago into a true scene of terror. But this was only the beginning of the unspeakable horrors that were about to unfold. With a heart devoid of humanity, Dexter chose to subject Maria to a vile act of sexual assault. As if the night hadn't witnessed enough terror, the group's hands were stained with blood as they ruthlessly snuffed out the lives of both Maria and Hoy. The 2007 trial that followed left little room for doubt or debate. How could there be a shred of mercy or leniency when confronted with such a blatant case of rape and murder? Found guilty on both charges at the tender age of 18, Dexter sealed his fate. The death penalty loomed ominously over him, a sentence that would mark the end of his short and brutal existence. As the courtroom erupted into chaos upon hearing the verdict, Dexter's own desperation manifested in violent outbursts and futile attempts to escape the inevitable. But the restraints held him firmly in place, a physical reminder of the ultimate consequences he would face. Join the debate as we ponder a crucial question. What would have been a more fitting punishment for these teenage convicts? Should rehabilitation have been considered offering them a chance for redemption? We eagerly wait your views in the comments section below. And remember, 
Don't miss out on the spine-chilling content we offer on Just Scary. Hit that like button, share it with fellow crime enthusiasts, and subscribe to the channel for more horrifying videos that not only terrify but also teach important lessons. 3. Prepare yourself for a disturbing tale that will leave you questioning the depths of human depravity. I didn't mean to kill Ashley. I really didn't. You really think I did it? I didn't mean to hurt him. At just 17, Dylan Shoemaker committed an unthinkable act of violence, brutally beating his girlfriend's innocent 23-month-old son to death. As I delved into videos exploring this teenager's case, I was stunned to witness his attorneys desperately trying to defend him, arguing that Dylan suffered from anger management issues and lacked self-control, implying that he didn't intend to harm the helpless baby. The very notion that legal representation would be provided for such a heinous crime left me perplexed. With all the evidence against him, after all, what could they possibly achieve in their defense when confronted with the undeniable fact that a precious life had been snuffed out? And we all know that the justice system considers criminals innocent until proven guilty by a jury of their own peers. And the jurors in Buffalo saw through the smoke and mirrors. They rendered a resounding verdict of guilty for second-degree murder. The judge, determined to deliver justice, bestowed upon Dylan the harshest punishment Buffalo had to offer, a staggering sentence of 25 years to life behind bars. But as I contemplated this chilling case, one haunting question plagued my thoughts. Who possesses the audacity or the heart of stone to end the life of a defenseless baby? The answer, it seems, lies solely with Dylan Shoemaker, a perpetrator of unimaginable evil. 4. Prepare to be immersed in a chilling tale that unfolded in Gwinnett County, Georgia in October 2018. The discovery of William Tunches's lifeless body in the woods sent shockwaves through the community. The investigation revealed the disturbing chain of events that began innocently enough with a teenage crush and some online chit-chat. It all started when 17-year-old Francesca Torres engaged in communication with Tunches, who was expressing romantic interest. However, things took a dark turn when they planned for a rendezvous in the forest. Torres agreed to meet Tunches, but unbeknownst to him, she was accompanied by two other teenagers. Nicholas Evans and Khalil Miller. As Tunches arrived, expecting a night of intimacy, he was greeted with a shocking surprise. Evans and Miller, armed with guns, attempted to rob him. When Tunches resisted, the situation turned violent, leading to his tragic demise through a combination of gunshots and blunt force trauma to the head. The trio, Torres, Evans, and Miller, faced the consequences of their heinous actions arrested and charged with murder, aggravated assault, and robbery. They found themselves at the mercy of the justice system. Despite Torres technically not assaulting Tunches, all three were sentenced to life in prison, a decision that left Torres visibly shaken and feeling unjustly condemned. <sighs> and that's all for today. Did you enjoy the video? Then give it a like. If you have any suggestions for an upcoming video, give us a comment in the section below. Smash the like button and subscribe to Just Scary. Also, press that bell notification icon to never miss a video from us. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.